So good morning, um, church. It's good to be with you again. Uh, another day in this journey through this crisis in our country, but another day also of our journey through this Lenten season. So uh, Mass will be starting in just about 15 minutes, and um, we look forward to sharing again with you this time in prayer. Thanks.
We pray in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Well, it's a joy to begin this day with you again. Welcome to my chapel, and thank you for giving me the privilege of entering into your homes or wherever you're accessing this Mass from this morning. So we begin another day in this uh, uh, time of, of crisis within our country and our world. We draw close to the Lord to give us strength, and but we pray for all in the world that are suffering because of this pandemic in different ways. And so as we enter into this, these mysteries, we call to mind our need for Jesus, our need for a Redeemer. We ask for his mercy and grace. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd leading us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you give us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you prepare a place for us at the eternal banquet in your heavenly kingdom. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, who made all those reborn in Christ a chosen race and a royal priesthood, grant us, we pray, the grace to will and to do what you command, that the people called to eternal life may be one in the faith of their hearts and the homage of their deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Our 
Our first reading today is taken from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, I will take the children of Israel from among the nations to which they have come and gather them from all sides to bring them back to their land. I will make them one nation upon the land in the mountains of Israel, and there shall be one prince for them all. Never again shall they be two nations, and never again shall they be divided into two kingdoms. No longer shall they defile themselves with their idols, their abominations, and all their transgressions. I will deliver them from all their sins of apostasy and cleanse them so that they may be my people and I may be their God. My servant David shall be prince over them and there shall be one shepherd for them all. They shall live by my statutes and carefully observe my decrees. They shall live on the land that I gave to my servant Jacob, the land where their fathers lived. They shall live on it forever, they and their children and their children's children, with my servant David, their prince, forever. I will make them a covenant of peace. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them, and I will multiply them and put my sanctuary among them forever. My dwelling shall be with them. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Thus the nation shall know that it is I, the Lord, who make Israel holy, when my sanctuary shall be set up among them forever. The word of the Lord. Our response, the Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations. Proclaim it on distant isles and say, He who scattered Israel now gathers them together. He guards them as a shepherd his flock. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. The Lord shall ransom Jacob. He shall redeem him from the hand of his conqueror. Shouting, they shall mount the heights of Zion. They shall come streaming to the Lord's blessing the grain, the wine, and the oil, the sheep, and the oxen. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. Then the virgin shall make merry and dance, and young men and old as well. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will console and gladden them after their sorrows. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Cast away from you all the crimes you have committed, says the Lord, and make for yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what Jesus had done began to believe in him. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. So the chief priest and the Pharisees convened the Sanhedrin and said, What are we going to do? This man is performing many signs. If we leave him alone, all will believe in him, and the Romans will come and take away both our land and our nation. But one of them, Caiaphas, who was high priest that year, said to them, You know nothing, nor do you consider that it is better for you that one man should die instead of the people, so that the whole nation may not perish. He did not say this on his own, but since he was the high priest for that year, he prophesied that Jesus was going to die for the nation and not only for the nation, but also to gather into one the dispersed children of God. So from that day on, they planned to kill him. So Jesus no longer walked about in public among the Jews, but he left for the region near the desert to a town called Ephraim, 
and there he remained with his disciples. Now the Passover of the Jews was near, and many went up from the country to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. They looked for Jesus and said to one another as they were in the temple area, What do you think, that he will come to the feast? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Our, our reading from St. John today from his Gospel gives us um, rather famous passage where we see now that the the um, the Pharisees are quite concerned that Jesus is gathering a tremendous following, particularly after raising Lazarus from the dead. And people are attracted to him and to his words, his message, and they see this as a threat to their authority. But they're, they're um, some of them anyway are confused about what are they going to do about this situation. And then Caiaphas, the high priest, he, he says, well, it's better for one man to die than the whole nation. And they envision that if they allow Jesus to continue, that Rome is going to get upset and come and destroy the whole nation. That's the, the dire model, if you will, that they've constructed uh, for themselves to justify now that taking Jesus is really his life will be a way to save all of the people. You know, during this uh, coronavirus uh, epidemic, one of the issues that has come up and with the disabilities community is a great concern that um, they might be, be deprived of care because people would judge their lives not as worthy as other people's lives. And, and some, there was a article in our paper here in Kansas City about a woman who's on a ventilator now for health needs and afraid that her ventilator might be taken away from her. And that this is a serious issue, and it's a moral issue uh, always when others judge whose life is worthy of living. Um, there's a concern, obviously, that our healthcare system could be overrun, and like in a battlefield uh, situation, that our medical per personnel might have to do triage, and they might have to make evaluations of who, who's, who do we care for first, um, and these that can be a valid circumstance, but to to make judgments that some people's lives are more worthy than others, not on objective medical criteria, these are the people we have to prioritize because these are the ones that we believe that we can really help at this moment in this circumstance. But to to say some lives are unworthy or less worthy, and so we're going to deny them treatment. But there's uh, there's a different uh, way. For, so for the state or for others to make these judgments on whose lives are worthy or not worthy is a very dangerous path um, and not one that is morally acceptable in our Catholic tradition. But there's also the individual deciding, I will give my life for the good of the other. There was a, a beautiful story perhaps a few weeks ago uh, you may have seen it, it was on CBS and others, about this priest in Italy, Don Giuseppe Meridelli, um, who was, I think, 72 years old, had been a priest for 47 years, was the pastor in this uh, part of Italy where the, the coronavirus has been most devastating. And his uh, parishioners had purchased, actually, for him some time ago, a ventilator because of some of his problems that he had, respiratory problems that he had before the coronavirus. And F Father Berardelli chose to give up the ventilator for others, that others might, uh, who were, might die because of the coronavirus, uh, that they would live. So he chose to sacrifice his life for others. It's much like, uh, although a different circumstance of uh, St. Maximilian Colby, who in the Second World War, in a prisoner of war camp, um, when the Nazis had decided they were going to execute 10 people at random, and he was not one of the 10 chosen, but another man who was married with wife and children 
who was uh, weeping because his wife would be a widow and his children would be orphaned, um, that Father Maximilian Mary Colby offered to take this man's place and the Nazis were stunned by it, but they accepted it. And that's really what we believe Jesus does. He, he chooses to lay down his life. This is particularly clear in John's gospel and his passion account that Jesus chooses to give his life so that we would know the Father's mercy, so that we would know what the cross symbolizes, the depth of God's love for us, and so that we could share in his life. And so this is, uh, we see the, the enemies of Jesus, the Pharisees, wanting to, deciding where we're going to take his life and rationalizing that so that we might save the nation. But Jesus, on the other hand, chooses to give his life. Now, this is the amazing thing that we believe as Christians, that God so loves us that Jesus would come into our world, take on our humanity, and even go through the, the terrible ordeal of not only death, but death on a cross. This is the amazing love that God has demonstrated for us, that he wanted to immerse himself in our human condition so that we could share in his life. And so that it's that that gives us confidence, even in the darkest or hardest moments. And uh, it's with that that we now uh, will enter into Holy Week uh, tomorrow and this most solemn time when we really celebrate um, and recall in our prayer the incredible love for God revealed for us in his son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life for us. Let's continue our prayer now with our petitions. And uh, I thought you might be getting tired of my petitions, so we're going to use some from the Office of Readings today. To make us his new creation, Christ the Lord gave us the waters of rebirth and spread the table of his body and his word. Let us call upon him and say, Lord, hear our prayer. Jesus, meek and humble of heart, clothe us with compassion, kindness, and humility. Make us want to be patient with everyone. For this, we pray to the Lord. Teach us to be true neighbors to all in trouble and distress, and so imitate you, the good Samaritan. For this, we pray to the Lord. May the Blessed Virgin, your mother, pray for all those vow to a life of virginity, that they may deepen their dedication to you and to the church. For this, we pray to the Lord. Grant us the gift of your mercy, forgive our sins, and remit their punishment. For this, we pray to the Lord. And we pray for those working on a vaccine and cures for this virus, that the Lord might bless and inspire their efforts. For this, we pray to the Lord. We pray also for all of our doctors and nurses, all the medical personnel, our first responders, our, our police, and all those that guard our community, that as they risk their lives to protect ours, um, that the Lord will bless them in every way and protect them. For this, we pray to the Lord. I, ask, uh, you, I offer Mass today for a special intention uh, for a woman that's had a recurrence of cancer, uh, that the Lord might bring healing to her and comfort and strength to her family. For this, we pray to the Lord. God, our Father, you always work to save us, and now we rejoice in the great love you give to your chosen people. Protect all who are about to become your children and continue to bless those who are already baptized. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. This mystery of water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ and humble himself to share in our humanity. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the gifts we offer from our fasting be acceptable to you, O Lord, we pray, and as an expiation for our sins, may they make us worthy of your grace and lead us to what you promise for eternity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty, since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks. As an exaltation, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray, that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, 
and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, James Patrick, our Archbishop Emeritus, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. And through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, through your death gave life to the world, free me by this your most holy body and blood from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me always faithful to your commandments and never let me be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. I invite you at this time to make an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you, my Lord and my God. Amen.
possessed our lips as food, O Lord, may we possess in purity of heart that what has been given to us in time may be our healing for eternity. Our communion antiphon, Christ, is, Christ was handed over to gather into one the scattered children of God. Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so may you make us shares of his divine nature who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Well, before our final blessing uh, tomorrow, Mass will be at 10 a.m. for Palm Sunday, and we'll be doing this from the cathedral tomorrow here in Kansas City, Kansas, uh, from our cathedral, St. Peter's. It's a beautiful space, and uh, we think the quality of, will be even better. Um, you can come to this Facebook page, and there'll be a link how to get there, or you can go to livestream.com, livestream.com, and then look for the arch diocese in Kansas City, um, and uh, there'll be a place where you can access it there as well. Um, you can go to our, our website of the Archdiocese of Kansas City in Kansas. It'll also give you directions to get there as well. Um, we'll have organ and a canter and, a, and um, uh, what I think will be a, a beautiful celebration under these circumstances of Palm Sunday. So we encourage you and invite you to join us for that. Um, on Monday, we'll be back here at 8 a.m. on our Facebook, back in my chapel, uh, for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday morning Mass at 8.30 a.m. And then we'll enter into the Triduum, and we'll be doing all of those service on Holy Thursday evening, Good Friday, uh, the Easter Vigil on Holy Saturday night, and Easter Sunday Mass from the Cathedral of St. Peter. And as I said, we'll have music there. I thought of uh, doing some cantering myself here at these masses as part of your Lenten penance. Um, my voice is not very beautiful, um, but tomorrow we'll have some beautiful music to accompany us in that celebration. So I hope you can join us and my, um, thank you again for, for beginning this day in prayer with me. Um, another opportunity for this Holy Week for you, the monks of St. Benedict's Abbey in Atchison are offering a Holy Week retreat live stream. So you can go to their website, St. Benedict's Abbey in Atchison, or on our Archdiocesan uh, website too, you can find information about that. A, a beautiful way to make a Holy Week special during these very unusual circumstances. So the Lord be with you. Please bow for the blessing. Have mercy, Lord, on your church as she brings you her supplications and be attentive to those who incline their hearts before you. Do not allow, we pray, those you have redeemed by the death of your only begotten Son to be harmed by their sins or weighed down by their trials. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain forever. Amen. Go in the peace of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Thanks again for, for joining. And again, hope to be with you tomorrow from the Cathedral of St. Peter. Uh, hope you have a very blessed day today. Keep safe. Remember, we're in this together, but and the Lord is with us. Thanks.